Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to our OpenGL series in which we are learning modern OpenGL in this series. So previously we've been talking about transformations. In the previous video, we learned about rotation matrices. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure you go back and check that. So in this particular video, we're going to be looking at the scale matrix. So we've looked at translation, we've looked at rotation. Now we want to learn how to scale or make things larger or smaller. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. So soon we'll be updating the code here and I'll go through and give you a brief review of the things that we've done since last time. But where I want to go ahead and start this lesson is just learning a little bit about transformations. So if you Google something like OpenGL, rotation matrices, special matrices, etc., you'll probably get some help page here. But I want to go ahead and again look at OpenGL scale transformations, which I happen to know are in this article, and actually look at what scaling means. So scaling is one of the special transformations that we perform to each of the vertices in our program in the vertex shader. Uh, and as I showed before, where we have each individual vertex, for instance, we specify those in a vertex buffer object, they're sent off to the GPU, and then we transform them. So the default orientation or the sort of default uh, that we have here is an identity matrix, right? This is just where they are by default. We've placed those vertices exactly as we said they are in the vertex buffer object. But we might want to actually scale our object. So it's not so meaningful when I look at the points here, but instead, let me go ahead and just draw a three-dimensional cube here. And again, we want to think of the individual points here. Now, they are all individual points, and how the points are connected, the vertices, is defined in things like our index element buffer, the actual connectivity. And that's how we know to rasterize or fill this in and make it look like a cube. But if you can leave that for a moment and just think about this cube here, if I draw a coordinate axis here, I'm drawing it in yellow so you can kind of see through it. Hopefully that uh, works for you. <laughs> um, but the basic idea is I, if I look at each of these points individually, and then I look at this special matrix here on the right, which is, or excuse me, your left here, which is going to be um, the scaling matrix here, or, or actually, let me keep you here. Just, just look at the diagonal of this matrix here. In fact, let, let's rewind for a second here. Let me get you to the uh, identity, which is just on this side here. Okay. So you'll see ones across the diagonal. So I'm effectively multiplying uh, and let's go ahead and label this as our identity here with ones across the diagonal. And as I showed last time, just for a brief moment here, um, the each of these columns here represents how we're transforming the X points, the Y point, and the Z point. Okay, so if we're multiplying the x, y, and z point of each of these individual vertices by uh, zero, or, or excuse me, by one, which is our diagonal here, then we're not changing where this point is, right? I'm effectively saying, what's the position? Multiply the x by one, the y by one, and the z by one. But if I come down here to our scaling matrix here, you'll see that our this matrix is set up to multiply across the diagonal here, okay? So that's the actual transformation that we're performing. So if I want to make all these values, uh, and let's go ahead and draw our scale matrix over here. Right, this is the scale along the X, scale against the Y, scale against the Z, and then one down here. Right, this is how I'm scaling here. So if I pass in two for each of these values, that will make each of these points effectively scale outwards two uh, in the direction that they are oriented. Okay, effectively enlarging our object. If I make them multiply by 0.5, it'll shrink our object, or I don't have to do a uniform scale. I might choose to do something like 1.5 in the X dimension, 0.5 in the Y to kind of squish it down, and then to lengthen it across in the Z, uh, maybe 2.0, okay? So that's our scale. So let's go ahead and look at this in code uh, and go ahead through the, open, uh, the GLM docs here. I'm just gonna go ahead and type out scale uh, let's see, this this page sometimes gets me a wonky result. Let me refresh, go to the API documentation. Let's type in scale. Uh, let's see if we can get something uh, more meaningful here. There we go. Get to the scale. And basically, this just takes in an input and then the ratio for scaling along each of the axes. Again, you can see that this is a, uh, a vector with three components, X, Y, and Z for us. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep that open. And let's go ahead and 
figure out how to scale here. Uh, so from our program here, this is going to take place in the main loop and in the pre-draw here, where we're doing all of our update transformations. Now, last time, again, we did this transform on our model uh, matrix here to translate from the identity by some offset, and then we rotate it. Okay, so that was the idea. So let's go ahead and update our model matrix this time to do a GLM scale. And again, just looking at the help page here, this is our input matrix, the model matrix, and then the ratio here. So model, and then the vector that I'm going to apply. Now, just to make sure this is working, I'm just going to put in ones for each of these. So it's the identity. We shouldn't see any change in our program. Let's go ahead and get a baseline here. And again, here's how I'm compiling on Linux. You can look at my other videos to figure out uh, on your platform how to do this. And let's see here what we got here. Yep, looks like one missing right parentheses. And let's go ahead and see. It looks like we need uh, to make sure that this is a VEC3, just to be super specific. All right, there we go. The DLM API is pretty regular, but on occasion, fix some errors. All right, and let's go ahead and bring in this program here. And again, this is the sort of base here. I hold down arrow to translate us back. And let's actually capture this value. I'll just initialize it to negative two here. And then the left and the right arrow can rotate. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a uh, update on our offset. And that's at the top of our program. Let's go ahead down here. Let's just make this negative two so we don't have to keep scrolling backwards uh, and save you a little bit of time. And we'll go ahead and run it again, or recompile and run since we made a change on the CPU side. And this is our default. And left and right arrow changes the angle, up and down pushes us back. Now let's go ahead and just scale this uh, in half here, okay? And I'll go ahead and create a variable here, float g underscore u scale. And if I pass in zero again, this is going to shrink everything to the origin because I'm multiplying all the points by zero, so they're just going to close in here. So let's do something a little bit more reasonable here. And let's just set this to uh, 0 0.5. And then let's come into our uh, scale here in pre-draw. And let's come down here a little bit. And here we are. And let's set up our vector. G underscore U scale. G underscore U scale. G underscore U scale. Three times uh, because I, I want to scale this uniformly so across the x and the y and the z you don't have to do this but again um, i'm just going to do it for our demonstration let's go ahead and run it and well this looks smaller to me okay <laughs> so looks like it's working and that's really all there is to this actual uh, scale operation okay so that's the basic idea here so we're first translating our object backwards rotating it by however many degrees in this case uh none initially so zero and then we scale or shrink down our object after that transformation okay so that is the order in which these operations are applied so we're sort of just building up this uh, matrix that we eventually send into our program again through this uniform variable u underscore model matrix and we then multiply that model matrix by our projection to get our program all right, so that's the basic idea. That's all there is to scaling. I don't think we need to make this uh, any longer here. I'll go ahead and uh, just run this program one more time so you can see it. And here it is, and you can enjoy. All right, folks, so that's all there is to scaling. Hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you've been enjoying this series and learning how to do some of these basic operations. Uh, soon enough, we'll talk about, again, why the order matters and how we have to be a little bit careful with rotation matrices. So again, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those lessons. But hope you've been enjoying it. And as I always say, once you can draw one triangle or two, in this case, a square, and start moving them around, you've pretty much got the basics of a 2D game engine here. Now you just need to draw lots of these and maybe figure out how to work with some transparency and a few other things, but that's really it. We have the basics here, and I think that's very exciting. Anyways, folks, with that said, thank you as always for your time and attention, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.